you can spend a long time working with the Hara. It's a it's an amazing world, and it's also a very frightening world. Um, we don't want to go there often, mm. and yet we have to. This is the human journey, yeah. And in the end, it's all smoke screens. <laughs> Our fears don't exist. They they're just smoke. Hmm? When we face them, they don't exist. Yeah, but we have to face them, and it takes courage. It takes intention. It takes intent, and it takes a strong desire to do that. Yeah, because it can be a rocky road initially hmm. so other essences in the himalayan range that can help with the um with issues around um the second chakra a womb with a view Golden Dawn, Goddess, Warrior, Sludge Buster, Opium Poppy, Chiron, Gateway, Nijara, Renaissance, and also the Astro Moon essences. The Astro Moons depending on where they are in our birth chart, um, very much involved with the, with the world of the Hara, the moon energy. It's the emotions, it's the water. Hmm. When we feel this incredible contentment in the second chakra, from merging of the first and second chakras energy creating a circle of light then the question comes you know well who is this who is this feeling this contentment who am i a key question in a lot of indian um, spirituality who am I, and this is a question of the third chakra, the solar plexus. Who am I? Because the third chakra is the center of personal power. The second chakra is the center of power. It's the storehouse of energy. It's where we store our power, our energy from the first chakra. Comes up to the second chakra, we have this storehouse, this reservoir, you know, and if this something that's blocked this energy moving it just means we have a we're deficient in in um in energy yeah second chakra is the storehouse of energy the third chakra and power and the third chakra is our individual power how we express it in the world how we interface with the world An image of the second chakra, the, 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 the third chakra essence is called strength. It's often symbolized by the sun. It's a yellow flower. It's a yellow energy. The color is yellow. The second chakra, the color is orange. And it's an orange flower. The third is yellow. It's vibrant. It's vital. It's our individual expression of who we are and again because of society because of our conditioning because of the way we've been brought up no one is really encouraged to be who they are <laughs> it's hard to be somebody to be like somebody to be like little johnny down the road you know he does this he does that why aren't you like that you know, nobody is really told to be who they are. 
Um, and so the energy of the Hara, which is already probably distorted from childhood wounds and conditioning, is again more distorted in the third chakra. No one is encouraged to be who they are authentically because it's uncontrollable. It's a rebel. It's a free spirit. Yeah. Um, personal power. And because of dysfunctions in the third chakra, it's, it's, it's often expressed through control over others, you know, predators or dictators or abusers. It's all a misunderstanding of personal power. And victims also is a distortion of the energy of the third chakra. Um, takes two to play a game, a dictator and a victim, a slave and a controller. Um, both are distortions of the energy of the third chakra. What often happens in the third chakra is that we've created a personality. And this is normal. This is the, the way life functions in society and in each society. Um, personality comes from the Greek word persona, which is mask, which was in Greek theater. All the actors wore a mask. And in a sense, that is what we do when we create our personality. We've created a mask that we know works. This is what works. This is what gets me what I want. This is what gets me the lover I want. This is what gets me the job I want. This is what gets me, you know, the, the career I want. It's whatever works. We've created this personality. And so, you know, we show a different face to our lover, to our kids, to, a, to our boss, to a beggar on the street. We, we have the multiple personalities that, that we use in different ways. You know, most people are sort of functional in that they've sort of integrated these many faces and, and they can kind of operate in the world. Um, mostly we want to put this lovely, lovely face that, you know, people will love me because, you know, I'm a nice guy and I project this, you know. Um, you can call that the glittering image. We've created this personality of a glittering image. Yeah. It takes a lot of energy to maintain this false image. Mm. And it takes even more energy to repress the shadow side, all those aspects of ourselves which we've been told are not okay, won't get us what we want, are not acceptable, not acceptable to me, not acceptable to society. Um, and so we repress all these aspects of ourselves that which considered not okay. Yeah. This is an awful lot of Hara energy invested in one, creating this false persona, this glittering image. And secondly, keeping the lid on, repressing all these aspects of ourselves, which we have been told are not okay. No, and the reality is that we contain every aspect possible in human life within us, the murderer and the saint, Hitler and Buddha. We contain all possibilities and it is a matter of just integrating and accepting and allowing and not fighting to fully understand that we are multi-dimensional beings, we can we create or we we contain all these different aspects and emotions. But when we're in balance, it's all in balance. Yeah. Sometimes rage is needed. 
but it's not cold blooded killer rage. It's just a response to a situation such as Jesus in the temple of money lenders, <laughs> tables everywhere, money everywhere, just enraged that a, a sacred place was being abused. And then it's gone back into peace, equilibrium. Yeah. And not really hurting anybody. Just expressing. So when we work with the third chakra, we have to face the shadow within us. And we have to face the reality that a lot of our personality and image is a bit of a lie. <laughs> it's not who we really are. Yeah. And it doesn't rely. Our personal power is not dependent on having power over someone else, controlling someone else. Yeah. If it does, it's a distortion. It means we haven't come into balance with ourselves. A sage is a fully powerful person who is just quietly powerful. He knows who he is and he doesn't need control over anyone to feel good about himself. Yeah. Only a person who doesn't feel good about themselves needs to have power over others. Who am I? The quality and the question of the third chakra. Different essences that are related to the third chakra, the issues of the third chakra are hidden splendor, which is about evoking the beauty of who we are. Yeah. Pluto, which is about evoking the shadow side. The astro essences for the sun, depending on one's particular birth chart or what's going on in the sky at that moment, can be very, very powerful because it's sun energy here. Yeah. Children's flower, coming back to the innocence of a child. Yeah. Knowing who we are. That purity, that wonder in life. Yeah. That open hearted exploration of each moment, not wanting to control it, not judging it, no expectation that things should be a certain way, but to simply agreeing to whatever is in this moment and then responding from that place. Yeah. Trust. Trust is an important one. Trust is an important one in this whole chakra journey. Yeah. Trusting that we have the tools we have the power and we have the ability to deal with whatever life throws at us and whatever is evoked within us yeah coming back to a place of trust heart of tantra is another one that um, is bringing balance into the whole system bringing that sexual energy in balance particularly in a man the question in the heart chakra, who am I? The energy immediately moves to the heart. Sorry, the question in the third chakra, who am I? The energy immediately moves up to the heart. It does it by itself. Yeah, and that's the beautiful thing with working with the chakras. It's, they're not isolated. They, they, they're in constant flux and they're in constant movement. But when you focus on the third chakra and you're just going, who am I? The energy just moves up to the heart. I'm love. It's so simple. Yeah, I am love. The essence for the heart chakra is called ecstasy. It's a wild pink rose, the Tibetan rose. I said that the different colors of the rainbow are, are represented in the chakras. And so green is traditionally the color for the chakra. 
and there are many green flowers in the Himalayan range which actually do work on the chakra but the ro the, the the flower that seems to have the most power for me with the, with activating the the heart chakra is the pink tibetan rose it's just this uh, for me it's it's pink love yeah it's just it's, it's a radiance and has the most gorgeous fragrance it's a very simple flower a little about that big um it's delicious to eat and a very sweet gentle fragrance love the energy of love in the heart chakra is it's not really emotional love you know what we think of as in love you know this rush of emotions and overwhelming feelings is very related to the second chakra yeah the second chakra is the chakra of emotions yeah we often confuse the in love feeling with all these emotions as love and it's very much often second chakra energy and that's why so often in our after the honeymoon of initial flush of overwhelming emotional love we become really angry and the person is not who we want them to be and they piss us off and whatever and it this is all second chakra stuff you know it's not it's not the heart chakra it's connected of course they're all connected and it's all intermingled but it's a confusion um the love of the heart chakra is a unconditional transpersonal accepting love it's a love that knows peace it's a love that knows total acceptance of whatever is it's not needy it's not clingy it doesn't want things so as i was saying before when you take these essences and you go into the heart chakra the the vibration of this pink flower the the tibetan rose this essence is an invitation to the heart to open up yeah to know itself to know that our very existence is love the very stuff that we are made of is love in fact there is nothing else in existence except love love can contain the hatred the enmity the wars it all exists in this place yeah it's a bit of a contradiction it's a bit of a paradox it's a bit yeah 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 but you know what i'm saying is this is not intellectual don't believe it go there experience it experience it in in yourself and we forget and then we can come back and experience it again and have a top up and until one day hopefully we stay there yeah you know, i can't say that's happened to me i go in and out but um you know the taste is of nectar and the pull of the world and desires and ambitions are, are all there which actually pull us away from this place inside ourselves yeah you know, it's a transpersonal love it's a vast vast empty sky within the chest of spaciousness of beauty of oneness with all oneness with all beings you know in that place in the heart chakra there is no separation we're not separate from anything we're not separate from each other we're not separate from the world yes we are different physical entities but we are made of the same stuff and this is only a recognition that is possible individually yeah by doing the work by coming into wholeness within ourselves and tasting it
there is so much that could be said about each chakra the qualities of each chakra the the you know the deficiencies the the um the uh when we've got excessive energy in a chakra deficient energy in a chakra balanced energy in a chakra it's a huge field you know i'm just touching briefly in in more of a general poetic way right now but what i do say is that take the essences use them to access your inner world your chakras helping yourself bring each chakra into balance and you will find that it it affects your whole life it affects every aspect of your life but mostly it it affects just how you feel about yourself how you are your connection with your essence which from my understanding is really the only worthwhile thing is just to come back home to myself by knowing myself and uh, yeah it's um kind of the more I come in the more I realize that, that there is nobody here. I'm nobody. And yet, this is hugely liberating and vastly wonderful. And it takes a constant recognition. Yeah, because we have been so conditioned to look out. That we've forgotten who we are. Other essences for the heart chakra are white orchid, which is a beautiful, it's an, it's an expansive, I feel I've always kind of described it as the angelic realms of the heart. It's a, it's a beautiful expanded place of the heart chakra. Um, Guliva orchid, which very much works on forgiveness, which is another quality of the heart chakra. Expansion, which is like expanding this inner sky. Pink primula, which is just about pure delight, joy. Mm. Roots and wings, which is a combination of white orchid and cedar. Cedar works on the first chakra and white orchid works on the heart chakra. And so it's a connection of the polarities of, of the first chakra and the heart chakra. So it gives us stability and opens the heart at the same time. It's a, it's a lovely combination essence. Nijara 2 works on deconditioning the mental body. The heart rules the mental body. And Nijara 2 works on deconditioning mental beliefs, um, mental light chips, if you wait, like in our, in our, in our fourth subtle body it breaks up fixed patterns of energetic patterns yeah nijara itself the essence i mentioned around the first chakra is a wonderful essence for deconditioning on a cellular level what i found is that we can do inner work we can do therapy we can do all sorts of of spiritual work um but a lot of of dysfunctions are have become so entrenched over time that they're locked into the physical body, into the cells. And Nijara helps to decondition. Nijara is a Sanskrit word, which means deconditioning. And it deconditions on a cellular level. It helps release old patterns that have been held in the physical body yeah whereas nijara 2 is helping release from the mental body belief patterns thought patterns that are fixed yeah that get in the way of living our love yeah. 
the energy then moves up to the throat chakra. The throat chakra is sky blue. It's a beautiful blue. The essence is called authenticity. Authenticity, speaking our truth, yeah? Expressing our truth in the world. When we discover that we are love in the heart chakra, we want to share that love in the world, yeah? We want to create. We want to make manifest that love through art, through creativity. Um, it's, it's a sharing of the love. It's an overflowing of who we are and wanting to make it manifest in this physical world. The great cathedrals of Europe, the temples of the East, the Taj Mahal are expressions of the throat chakra. It's love made manifest into the world. Yeah. It's this impulse, this urge to share, to share love in the world. And it can be in many forms building a beautiful garden. The Zen gardens in Japan are. You know, I sat, I went, I was always into gardens and I, my great interest was the Zen rock gardens, which are just a few rocks in, in gravel, perfectly placed in balance. And I was always enamored of the books of Zen gardens when I was younger and, and very involved in landscape gardening. And it was many, many years before I could get to Kyoto to actually go to one of these gardens. And I went with a friend and her father. And I, my expectation was that this was a pure expression of stillness, of emptiness. And we were sitting there and I was just feeling this love flooding in my heart as I gazed at these four incredibly placed rocks in this courtyard of gravel. And I was just, my heart was exploding with love. And I looked to my friend and she just went, it's love. And her father was streaming tears. We were all touched with love. And it was uncanny that placing four rocks in a bed of gravel in a perfect way could evoke love to that degree. It was, it was, it was sublime. I, it kind of changed my life in a way. And it turned around my belief that Zen was about emptiness and stillness. Zen is about love. Like the best of Christianity is about love. Like the best of Buddhism is about love. Uh, it's love. Yeah. The throat chakra, wanting to be authentic, wanting to share, make manifest love in the world. Yeah. Very much connected to the first chakra, to sexual energy. The sexual energy is what is needed for the creativity. Yeah. And the throat chakra actually governs all the lower chakras. It's like a control center. It's a very, very potent place. And, you know, I haven't mentioned all the different glands associated with the chakras, but this is the thyroid gland, yeah, um, which, drew, which runs the um, endocrine system, aspects of the endocrine system. Each, each chakra is ruling a gland, yeah. Um, the throat chakra rules all the lower chakras. And what I didn't mention before was that the first three chakras are related to the world, to the physical world, to how we are in the world. Yeah. All issues related to being in the world. The heart is the bridge. It's often called the rainbow bridge. It's the connecting point between the lower three and the upper three. The upper three chakras are very much more transcendental. They're, they're the kind of spiritual journey really taking off. Yeah. And they're much more transcendental issues up here. Um, something that I've found very much in new age movement and new age spirituality 
is that people want to just be up in that top chakras because this is spiritual and connected to God and, you know, it's, we don't want to be in the world. And this is such an aberration because they're not disconnected and you need the energy of the first chakras to bring health and wholeness into the upper chakras. It, we are a whole. We need to be whole. We need to be integrated with all our energies. Yes, as you move through the chakras, you will find that whereas uh, the energy of the first chakra is like is volcanic, it's like a wildfire. It's like it's it's very intense and fierce, and it's a strong energy. Yeah. And as it comes up, it becomes more and more refined. Yeah, and, and subtle and and delicate and spacious. But it doesn't mean it's better. Yeah. It's just different. Yeah. We need all of them. To be disconnected, to to repress the first chakra because you say sex is gross, you know, it, it's it just means you've cut off your life force. Yeah. You need all. You need all. This, the first chakra is where the energy comes from for the journey up to here. Yeah. I want to give love to the world. I want to share love to the world. I want to manifest love to the world. The energy rises to the third eye. What is the source of this love? I want to know. I want to know what's behind it all. Where's it come from? What, what is the essence of this love of who I am? Yeah. So these are very much questions of the, the third eye, the sixth chakra. The sixth chakra is about um, psychic powers. It's about visions of dreams, of of great ideas, um, the essence is called clarity. Yeah, it's 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 quite mental, but it's visionary. Yeah, it's not just intellectual; it's visionary, understanding, awareness. It's awareness, awareness, and awareness is is vital in this work. It's 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 like the acute looking to see things clearly, yeah? Now, what often happens, people that are very um, imbalanced, that their energy is all up here and not down here, is that they have great ideas, you know? They're always thinking of things, the great projects they can do, uh, the new idea to do. They're ungrounded because they're disconnected from their first chakra. They never make it happen. They can't make it happen because they don't have that physical grounding. Yeah. We need both. We need the physical grounding of the first chakra and the first three chakras to ground visions, to give us the roots for our wings to fly. Yeah. A tree needs roots deep in the earth in order to reach high up to the stars you know the wonderful paintings of van gogh who had his trees reaching up to the stars you know and he was criticized for it you know trees don't touch to the stars you know he said well i see the longing of every tree to reach the stars yeah they need roots deep in the earth we need to be deeply connected to our lower three chakras in order to reach up to manifest our dreams our visions It's indigo, the color. It's, it's like, what is the source of this love? It's like in the sixth chakra, we're standing at the door of the temple. We're looking in. We can see deep in the in the depths of the temple, we can see God. We can see the ultimate reality of existence. But we're still standing at the door. 
there's still me and God. We st uh, the, there's still a separation. I've, I, I'm still holding on to this idea of myself as a separate entity. I can see. But there's still that egoic pride of me, yeah? Me, 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 me. I want it. I can see it. I'm not quite ready to let go yet. <laughs> I'm going to stay here a bit longer. There's a, there's a wonderful poem by Rabinath Tagore, where he talks about this, this seeker who'd been searching for many, many lives through all the galaxies of the universe looking for God. His whole existence over many, many lives was looking for God. And one day, in a faraway galaxy, he came across a house which said, this is God's house. He's like, my God, my search is over. My journey's come to an end. He climbed the steps up to the house and then he thought, oh, he took his shoes off so he wouldn't make a noise. And he got to the door, was about to knock. And then thought, what happens if God opens the door? Everything is over. My search is finished. I have no reason for my existence. And fear overtook him that he was going to lose his identity as a seeker, as someone searching for meaning. taking off his shoes, he put them in his hand and he crept silently down the stairs and ran, <laughs> ran as fast as he could through the galaxies, through far away from this house. And now he's still searching, but he knows where not to go. <laughs> he goes to every galaxy, to every planet, but he does not go to this house because he knows when he goes there, his search is over and his whole meaning of existence is over. It's a beautiful story. It's very much about here at the sixth chakra. When the energy moves to the crown chakra, we dissolve our individual identity and we merge with existence. The essence for the crown chakra is called flight. It's when we take flight, yeah? When we become one, truly become one with existence, we're no longer a separate identity. We are completely merged. Yes, we're in a separate body. But metaphysically, spiritually, we are not separate. And to operate from this place, I believe, is the highest place to be in this human existence. It brings balance to the whole system, yeah? And then the chakra... It's like an open channel. We become a, like an open conduit between the earth and the sky. Yeah? It's like we're bringing in the energy of the cosmos through our crown chakra, down through all the chakras, down through our legs and into the earth. And we're bringing the energy of the earth up through our whole body, through our chakras, and up into the sky. We become a whole being. We become in balance. 
we become peace, we become love, we become stillness, we become creativity, whatever wants to manifest through us then manifests and then our life on this earth is a blessing and by bringing balance into ourselves we bring balance into the world as i said at the beginning i don't believe it's ever been so important for each one of us individually to come back into balance the world is insane at this time and we need to come back into balance and we radiate balance into the world and then we will move from this place and do what is the natural imperative of this being to do on this planet for this short lifetime that we have. Mm. We can only love the earth if we uh, love ourselves. Yeah. I feel the earth is showering us with tools and information at this time. The flower essences are just one of them to bring balance back into the world. So, it's very nice meeting you and this wasn't as bad as I thought it would be um, trying to talk to a computer. <laughs> so, thank you very much. Um, thank you, Paolo and Serena for your incredible patience with me. I'm getting there. Okay. Ciao Italia. <laughs>